And we think that this, this is the best mechanics for using for this type of approach, for this type of uh, treatment. This is not a good mechanics. Actually, this is a bad mechanic. When you do this, we, have, we are imposing to the system different uh, geometries of this interaction between the second molar tube and the first molar tube or between in the lower arch the second molar tube and the second premolar bracket. What's going to happen when you have this type of interaction? We want to do the intrusion of the upper second molar but actually what we're going to have is a banded arch, distal part of the arch. Both uh, teeth in this case are going to angulate and bend the arch this way because of the interaction in geometry number one which is going to generate actually opposite vertical movements plus two moments in the same direction and of the same magnitude and this is going to happen this way so of course you can uh, uh, argue that yes it's going to intrude the second molar a little bit it's going to intrude I'm being very optimistic in this type of approach. And when we have this angulation of the, the, the molars, it's very difficult and because the arch is almost straight now, it's very difficult for the arch to have a rigidity, a rigidity at this magnitude to really control or to correct the problem. And in the lower arch, what is going on? We have the geometry number three, in which we have one angulation at, that is, in this case of the molar, we try to correct, we try to upright. But when we do that, and now we have two problems here. We don't have just one problem, as I'm uh, portraying in this picture. We have also another problem that I'm going to show to you. In this geometry, we are going to generate two moments in the same direction, but the moment in arch, the moment in the part A here, is a half of the moment that is applied in this segment here, in the beta uh, segment here. Alpha being the premolar, beta being the, the, the second molar in the tube of the second molar. These two couple systems here are really going to generate two different bad outcomes that we uh, must be aware of. First one is the intrusion of the premolar that is not just going to intrude. We are just seeing this in the second order view, the lateral view, but also in this case we are having another situation. Because of the intrusion, we also looking from above, looking from a first order view, we are having also the buccal displacement of the crown, meaning in this side, together with the intrusion, we have buccal inclination of the crown. In some cases, it's going to generate a cross bite because of this. Also, the molar is going to extrude, and because of the extrusion of the molar, you're going to generate a premature contact, premature contact between upper and lower. Remember that the upper molar already extrude, the first molar already extrude. So we have two problems here that's going to generate anti the posterior open bite. Intrusion of the premolar, extrusion of the molar, and we have also the extrusion of upper first molar. Did you notice what happened here? Why do we have this larger area here than before? It's easier for the arch, it's easier for this restrained system here to have the distal inclination of the crown. We know that the couple is a free vector, the uh, moment of the couple is a free vector, but in this case here, what is easier to uh, release the, the, this type of remodeling of bone is that the crown goes distal more than the root go mesial. So being a free vector, uh, it's supposed to have a center of rotation located at the center of resistance, but this is not going to happen because what we call the rowboat effect. We have the tendency of the angulation with the crown going mesial, but this is a very large need of remodeling here, so we can go mesial with the, the root. And it's very much easier, it's pretty much easier to go distal with the crown. Look at the magnitude of the problem generated here. We have, because of the rowboat effect, you increased, this is what I asked you before, and you gave me thumbs up, thank you for that, 
And now I'm explaining uh, the whole picture, the whole problem generated here. And this is now, compared to before, we have a class two because this segment is going distal. And some people say, no, I want to keep the crown of the molar at the position it is, so I'm going to cinch back the arch in the distal of the tube of the molar. Very bad, because the crown is going distal and it will help increase the class two. Now we have posterior cross, posterior, probably posterior cross bite at the premolar, we're not seeing this now because it's a lateral view, but I explained to you. Also we have a class two, worse than before, and we have more contact here, and we open the bite, we rotate the mandible down and backwards, and now you are going to struggle to correct the problems your mechanics, your bad mechanics in this case generated. Yes, my, yours, when we are not aware of this, we are generating this. Pay attention to cases like this in your office and tell me, no, in my office it doesn't happen this way because I have a magic pill that I correct everything, even when I apply a, a bad mechanic for that. Ah, okay, you, you need to show me that. I don't believe that you're going to have this, but okay, I will give you this. Okay, what we have now? We have one, two years to correct our own, our own malocclusion that we generated because not knowing this. You know what can happen here also? You can lose the molar because of the huge contact generated between upper and lower. And if you have like a decreased insertion in relation to the bone insertion of the, this root, you may end up losing also your molar. You see, not knowing biomechanics in orthodontics may be disastrous. You tend to simplify things. Well, I will apply this because I have a magic device for that. My brackets are perfect. My uh, prescription for those cases are perfect, but they are not because we must, we must respect the physics, okay? Take care. And uh, just for a reminder, we have our course on uh, um, accessible and practical biomechanics me mechanics and in tomorrow registration, so don't miss it. We did this flash reopening just for uh, those people that asked me, oh, prof, I didn't have time because the, the, the time zone or because I, I needed to have the money. Now I did it uh, for you, so please don't miss it. Tomorrow, midnight, GMT, we're go, going to close the uh, registration for this course, and I don't really know when we are, we are going to reopen it or a new course, I mean, a new group. Uh, more than 100 participants from more than 25 countries are there. Don't miss it. We're having now good discussions in our group, and this is my preferred course. Thank you. Bye-bye.